Hello and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft channel. In many of my past videos, I've demonstrated how to use a tarp to set up a shelter in the woods for camping. And most of those shelter configurations required the installation of a ridgeline first. And while I've shown myself putting up a ridgeline and I've shown myself tying several of those knots, I've never really gone over those knots in detail. And so today I wanted to take the time to give you some options of knots and hitches that you can use to set up a really taut ridgeline to construct a shelter with. And my personal preference for this system is what we teach at the Pathfinder School with a bowling loop, a trucker's hitch, a prusik knot. Those particular ones are very multifunctional and they just work well. And I've got them kind of down to the point where they're muscle memory. However, I know there are a lot of other good options out there, several that I've used and have worked well. So I wanted to share with you some of my top knots and hitches to set up a ridge line. Let's get started on that right now. All right, to get started on constructing a ridge line, we first need to understand that each end of the ridge line performs a different function. First of all, we have our static or stationary end, which is the first attachment point. And then the second end of the ridge line goes out to create tension so that we have a nice tight or taut ridge line. In this case, I have a pre-tied bowling loop on the first end of my ridge line. And then the opposite end is just an open end piece of cordage here, which is holding this all together. And that would be the tensioning end in the second point of the ridge line. Having this pre-tied bowling loop is an excellent option because it allows this piece of cord to be pulled out and used quickly for other purposes. Maybe I want to lash a load to an improvised pack frame or maybe I want to lash a bipod together so I can create a freestanding shelter out in the middle of a clearing. Having that loop there makes this a very quick system to do all of those things. So this is again a multifunctional piece of equipment, not just a ridge line that I use to hang a tarp over. This is the system that we teach at the Pathfinder School with the bowling loop and on the opposite end the tensioning knot is a trucker's hitch and it's an excellent system. I've been using it for years. A lot of people have time tested this thing and once you do it a few times it becomes second nature, muscle memory, and you can throw this thing up really really quick. We call it the quick deploy ridge line. There's a lot of other options and I'll give you a couple of other ones that I've used that work well for me but again this would be my personal preference and favorite system, go-to system to use. So to set this up let me show you how to tie a bowling loop. To tie my bowling loop, I just have one end of my cordage here, and I simply use my strong hand to roll a bite in the cordage, and I just pinch that down on top of itself. And now I take this working end here, and I go up through the middle of that loop, and I'm going to pull a little cordage through, and now I'm going to go around behind the standing line. So you can see I'm going behind. And now I'm gonna take that tail and go right back through the loop. And with that, I can cinch this down, and that is a bowling loop. It's a very small bowling loop. I'm trying to make it fit in the frame, but that's what you want. And you'll know if you tied it right, one, because it doesn't slip, but two, notice the tail comes to the inside of the loop here. And that's what you want to see when you tie a bowling loop. So that's a very simple explanation. If you want to see a more detailed version, go and check out my video on how to tie that bowling loop. Now that I have my bowling loop tied, it's very simple to create this first anchor point for my ridge line. I simply take my cordage and wrap it around my tree that I want to attach to, and I simply use my fingers to pull a bite through the bowling loop. And that's the spot that I'll simply insert a toggle. It could be a stick off the ground, a spare tent stake, or if you carry pre-made toggles. Now I just cinch that down to the tree. Doesn't matter if the toggle's horizontal or ver vertical, none of that matters. Once I attach that, I can pull as tight as I want against that thing, tension. All you want, and it's not going anywhere. But the beauty of the system is when you're ready to break your camp, you just simply remove your toggle and reclaim your line. It would be uh, another option with this bowling loop to simply feed your entire ridge line back through the loop, which is kind of slow. And it also lends itself to want to tangle up sometimes. Plus, as you can see, my ridge line's nice and wet now, or it's been on this wet, muddy ground. Not that that's a big deal, but it's not nearly as quick or as easy as toggling. It is a very secure attachment point that way, but when you go to break camp, you gotta feed that thing all the way back through again. So the toggle method is by far, in my opinion, superior. And just to do that one more time, in case you're not familiar, take your cordage around the tree and now you pull a small bite of cordage back through your bowling loop. Insert your toggle and cinch it down to the tree. 
and you're ready to go. Now we go to step two on the opposite end of the ridge line where we tension this thing and get it nice and tight. All right, so now we're ready to tie our trucker's hitch. And I will be up front with you and tell you this is a very difficult knot to film for instructional purposes. I've gone ahead and toggled out this end with that bowling loop and toggle method that I showed you. And now I'm gonna run my line out to the tree that I want attention to and I just wrap my cord around the tree as you can see here. It's important to understand if you're right-handed you want your tensioning tree to be to your right. If you're left-handed reverse that. You can see this is my right hand and this is my dominant side. I'm going to reach over the line using my thumb to pick up the line and I'm going to create a twist in the line so it's just a loop right there. You want to pick up your line on the side that you're tensioning to. So I grab this line right here and I'm going to cinch a loop in that. And basically what I have right there is a Marline spike hitch, but it's creating a loop because it's cinched all the way down. I'm going to do that once again. That's a very quick disconnect loop. You just pull it and it pops right out. So again, take your dominant hand and reach over, grab your line and just twist. I know that looks kind of confusing and this is one of those things where if you get the muscle memory down you can do it blindfolded so I just reach over the line grab twist a loop and now use your fingers to pinch the line and cinch that loop in now you're gonna feed the rest of your line that's coming around that tree back through that loop and at that point that's what you're gonna cinch to to create tension and I know that's difficult to see just to give you a better view of how this all comes together, I've got my slip loop formed. Now I'm gonna bring this around and just run my line back through that slip loop there. Now, that's how this will tension, gives you that mechanical advantage. Once I have that thing as tight as I want it to go, I pinch everything together and now it won't slip. And I simply lay a bite, which is a bending your cord on top. Okay, once again, I just take all this excess cord here and lay a bite on top and now I can take my fingers and reach through that bite and grab that line and pull a bite through okay bite is just a bend in the cord and now I cinch all that down and it's nice and tight and now I can just pull this tail here just to reduce the amount of the loop that's hanging there and that's the finished knot all right so once again to finish it off we pulled through we got our tension just like this I pinch all of that together all three pieces one two three pieces across pinch all that together and just lay a bite on top of it just like that reach through that bite with your fingers and pick up the line that's hanging down and pull that through and it'll all slide and cinch that gives you a great big loop out here a great big long loop and because that's a little longer than I want it to be I just kind of cinch it up like that what you can do if you want to really secure this thing if you have another stick or another toggle you can put that there and just cinch this down on that toggle. Now, no matter what, your hitch isn't gonna slip and can't accidentally get pulled out or whatever. But again, when you're ready to take it down, you just pop the toggle out, pull the line, and release, release that loop. Now I just have to collect my cordage from there. Now there is a nice alternative hitch that you can use in place of the bowling loop system which I showed you and that is a Siberian hitch and I just simply wrap my cordage around the tree. I have my standing in and my working in or short in if you will and I just lay those parallel in the palm of my hand and I'm going to take that short in or working in and I'm going to wrap it around my knuckles just like this and at that point that end is going to go over top of both of my lines just like this. I'll just come back under my knuckle and over. And now what I'm gonna do there is I'm going to I have a loop there, which you can see I'm gonna pull a bite from my working end and just pull back on that. When I do that, I cinch this hitch all together like that. And this is a slip hitch, so it will slip right up against the tree. And I can pull that thing as tight as I want and it's not going anywhere, okay? I can use that trucker's hitch and cinch down on this and it will not come out. And the more I pull, actually, the tighter the hitch gets. But when it's time to release it, I just pull this tag in right here and it's a quick release system. So it's an excellent knot. It doesn't have the multi-functionality that that Bolin 
loop serves me by being already tied in my ridge line but if i just want a quick connect for that first anchor point this siberian hitch definitely feels that bill so to speak it's very quick to tie and it's a very sturdy point point. and again if you want to just secure it up a little more you can always go back to that toggle just like the bowling loop and cinch that toggle in on this thing and now that's not going anywhere at all but once again when we want to break camp just pop that toggle out pull that tag in and i can reclaim my cordage so siberian hitch is a nice hitch if you're not looking for the multi-functionality out of your ridge line by having a static loop Just in case you struggle with the trucker's hitch, or if you just want an alternative, this will give you one. And I don't even have a name for this knot. It's kind of self-taught the way I do this. I simply wrap the cordage around the tree, and now I bring my cordage over top of itself. And when you do that and you pull back towards the tree, you create a lot of tension in this line. Now, I'm simply going to wrap that cordage around, and I'm going to try to keep it nice and tight just to dress the knot up and I come over the cordage once again. And at that point, I'm gonna cinch it back towards the tree going in the opposite direction. And that gives you a mechanical advantage and cinches down that cord. Again, try to dress it up just to be neat. And now once again, I'm gonna come over that line and that gives me a third cinch at that point. Now, if you wrap back around here and come under the line, you can simply make one, two, three wraps once again and now just like we did with the trucker's hitch I simply create that bite and pull a bite through to cinch it down on itself and that thing's not going anywhere if I want to adjust that loop I can and just like we finished off our trucker's hitch I simply insert a toggle there and cinch that down and now even if this gets bumped or this line gets pulled it's not going to release your knot this is nowhere near to me as fast to tie as the trucker's hitch and it's also not quite as quick of a disconnect Although, I'll show you, if I pop that toggle out and release this, it slips loose pretty easily. Once you unwrap this, now you can just about pull this and get everything to slip out. So it is a fairly quick disconnect system. Not as quick as that trucker stitch, but we're talking a matter of seconds here. Once you're comfortable with this thing, you can really tie it fairly quickly. Once you set it up, come back over itself, it gives you more tension come back around one more time and again create some extra tension you really get that line tight right there and now we come back around the tree and just give ourselves a triple wrap this helps hold the cordage in place notice how I push that down it's almost like a bead you're pushing it down holds everything together pull that little slip half hitch in there I will say this takes more cordage too if you have a shorter ridge line this is a disadvantage for you because it takes more cordage wrapping around that tree and then once again, if we want, we can just toggle this thing off with a stick, a spare stake, or a pre-carved toggle. It's a good system. Not as good as the trucker's hitch in my opinion, but it may work for some of you guys. Now, once you pick your system to get a nice tight ridge line up, regardless of which knots or hitches you choose to do that, then you need slip loops on your line. And I have two versions here, and both of these have worked well for me. This is a standard Prusik knot with three turns, and this is a Klemheis knot, which is also three turns. All right, let's start with the Prusik loop first. And all I've got here is just a small loop of 36 bank line and I found that using a smaller diameter cordage for your loop works better if you let's say put 36 bank line on 550 paracord or even number 12 bank line works good on 550 paracord but your loop should be a smaller diameter cordage than your actual ridge line and it tends to hold better you can tie this off with an overhand knot or a necklace knot another knot for another day basically all I do is I lay this loop on top of the line and I'm going to take the knot end of it and pass around itself three times. So I'm just wrapping around the line. And once I've done three passes, I pull the knot end and let that thing just kind of cinch down on itself. And you have to dress this knot up. And what I mean is just make sure that the cord lays in order and doesn't bunch all up. 
And what that does for you is it gives you more surface area. And the more surface area, the more friction. And that's really what makes this not work well is the fact that it has friction fit on the cordage, just like this. I always tell people it kind of looks like a fist on the line, if that makes sense. Kind of silly, but that's kind of how it looks when it lays correctly when you've got it all dressed up. And that way you can pull the knot up and down the line, but when you pull from the side, it bites into the rope and holds nice and steady. So that's the Prusik loop. Three wraps, pull it tight, dress it up. Very simple knot. To attach a Clem Heist knot, we basically do the same thing. I have two ends to my loop, the knot and then the nice clean end. I'm going to leave the clean end here on the line, just like this. And I'm going to take the knot and wrap it around my ridge line three times. So again, it's another one of those three wrap things. And now from there, I'm going to take that knot and just feed it back through that original loop, the clean end of the knot. And now once again, I pull this tight and just kind of dress it up, make sure again that we get the maximum amount of surface area with this. And then when we pull from the side, this knot really holds well. And I kind of like the Clem Heist knot in that the cordage almost angles back towards your tarp. So when you pull this thing out from the side, it really does a good job of holding a tarp. We teach the Prusik loop at the Pathfinder School because it is such a multifunctional knot, but this Clem Heist knot is an excellent one for just simply attaching a tarp to a ridge line. Once again, if you guys are interested in the gear that you've seen me use, all of those items will be linked down below in the description box. I have several affiliate pages that you can purchase this gear from. Of course, if you use my affiliate links, I do benefit from that. It is a small percentage that comes back to me, but it is at no additional cost to you. So if you use those links, I greatly appreciate it. Many of you have, and I thank you for that support. All right, so there you have a really good set of knots and hitches that you can use to set up a taut ridge line. And you know, I'm sometimes guilty of teaching ahead a little bit. I'll show you how to do this tarp configuration or this tarp shelter, or I show myself doing this when I'm camping, but I don't really go into detail. And sometimes maybe that's not fair for those of you that are just getting started and you haven't learned these skills yet. Sometimes knot tying can be the most tedious part of a woodsman's skill set. So I wanted to try to film these things as best I could today and put this out there for those of you that maybe haven't mastered these skills yet. For some of you that may be considering going to the basic class at the Pathfinder School, this will give you a jump start too if you haven't worked on these skills. The bowling loop, that trucker's hitch, and the Prusik knot, those are three of the ones that we use. And I'll be honest with you, 99% of the time when I use a ridgeline, those are the ones that I'm using because they're so multifunctional and I've practiced them to the point that I can do them blindfolded. And um, all of these are good knots and good ways to do things, but those are my go-tos because they are multifunctional. But sometimes people People just want to know that there's more than one way to skin a cat so this will give you some different options that you can play with i want to thank you guys for your time and interest for all your kind words and support i hope you're doing well i look forward to seeing you on another video again very soon and until that one take care be safe and god bless